This simple shelf project is making use of a bunch of pallet wood I had kicking around. The process to make these boards usable was to first run the boards front and back through the thickness planer to clean up the faces. Then at the table saw I squared up one edge and then ripped all the boards to the same width. Lastly the boards got a fresh 90 degree cut on both ends. Alright, at this point all the boards are flat on both sides, both edges are parallel and straight, and the ends are cut square. I've also eliminated the little bit of planer snipe at the end of each board as well as any really bad imperfections. There's a little bit of a bad knot over there that I'm hoping gets cut off with the overall length of this because there should be a little bit of extra. But this right now is about 21 and a half inches wide with all four boards, the four rows, and I need it to be around 12 feet in length. So I have all my boards laid out, making sure to stagger all the joints. So you see there's a joint right here, and then there's a long board right next to it. This is going to increase the strength of the shelf immensely by staggering these joints. Our boards will never be able to split right here because this end grain to end grain joint is going to be really weak. But this long grain joint all the way across it is going to support both these boards so nothing can ever happen down here. And that's the case everywhere. We've created basically a brick pattern which is insanely strong for this application. So the next thing to do is to go ahead and join these all together. Now I can't really think of a better way because I don't have 8 million clamps and I really don't have a lot of space to work on any of this is I'm going to go ahead and mark the areas where where I need to drill some pocket holes and I'm going to use pocket screws and glue. I did debate using biscuits but biscuits are more expensive mostly because I don't have many biscuits on hand right now and I have a whole hell of a lot of pocket screws in my pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and mark out everywhere that needs a pocket screw and drill those all. Okay, all the pocket holes are drilled and I've got my boards laid out, unfortunately on the wrong side. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and flip these all over. And once I do, that will give me access to install the pocket screw. And before I install the pocket screw, I have this little jig attached to my glue bottle here. And this just allows me to run a bead of glue exactly in the center. So I'm gonna go ahead, flip these over and get started assembling this. Well, that probably ranked number two on my all-time most stressful glue-ups. Didn't quite go exactly how I'd planned, but uh, whatever, here we are. It's a little bit of unevenness in some of the joints, but that'll work itself out. First though, we're going to mark 90 degrees and cut both sides to length. The overall length doesn't really matter, it's just somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 feet. So I'm going to go ahead, mark a straight line here, and I'm going to get my homemade track saw guide cut that off, cut the other end off, sand all this nice and flush, and we'll be in business. Okay, so this guy's all sanded up to 220. All the dust has been blown off, so I'm getting ready to just stain this with a dark walnut stain. Then I'm going to wipe off the excess with my towel, and then I'm going to even bring it out into the driveway after this is all done, so it dries super quick. Let's get started. Thank you. 
So the shelf portion of this build is done. I've got it inside. Three coats of polyurethane are on it and dried. It's looking really good. Now what I've got here is two basically really big L brackets made out of some two inch angle iron. I found these in the scrap bin, so I'm gonna use them because they're free. So all I need to do is use my little cutoff wheel here and cut these down to the right width, a little bit under the 21 inches of the width of the shelf, and then find the height for the distance from the bottom of the shelf to the ground. This needs to allow for clearance for the totes to slide underneath and not hit this. So I basically took the measurement of the tote, increased it by the two inch width and another half inch. So that leaves us around 18 inches. So I'm going to go ahead, cut these down and drill a series of holes in the top to attach to the bottom of the shelf. And the legs will be freestanding in the front, one in the middle and one on the floating end. Along the short side of the wall and the long side of the wall, I'm going to have a few L brackets tied into the studs. And this will fully support the shelf in the odd chance that the kids don't listen to me and start walking on the shelf when I'm not looking. We want them to be safe. So let's go ahead, start cutting. Not for long.